Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to part four of my trailer build. As always, if you happen to like and enjoy what you see, please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me and I definitely appreciate it as always. I've been able to enjoy my trailer now for a couple of months and it's been a while since I posted my last video, but since then I've been able to take it to the track, Summit Point Raceway. You can check out my video of my time at the track right here. It's been really good. It was nice pulling. The trailer worked extremely well. It was really, really nice having my first enclosed trailer. I didn't have to worry about everything getting wet, damp. I uh, just unloaded the car, loaded it right back up, and it made me really, really excited to get the bed in here eventually. Uh, so I don't have a ton of for this video today, right now, but since the last video, I have done the AC install, and we've also done some of the wiring. You can see the AC above my head I'm going to walk you through what we had to do to get to that point uh, but i did want to follow up on one other thing which would have been my tire rack back there it was a cheap easy like 50 dollar tire rack that i was able to get off of amazon i was pretty skeptical at first but the tires have been sitting up there now for quite a while and i had three of them on the rack when i drove to summit point and back and it held up just fine i didn't have any issues or concerns after i got back but I did want to show everybody what we ended up doing to mount that to the wall. Here we go. What I've done is basically taken some anchor bolts and bolted them straight through the wall supports or the wall studs in order to make sure that it was going to support everything that I needed. And it's worked out very well. It does fit four 275 wide tires on it. And I'll put the link below to this tire mount in case you want to do the exact same thing. If you look at my other video, uh, my first BMX build, that clamp has been extremely helpful while I have put everything together. But as far as the tire mount is concerned, you can see the carriage bolts that I have put here inside the stud. So I drilled straight through. I did put silicone around the bolts and then just kind of sunk them into the wall. On the other side, I just did some nylock nuts to make sure they held in place and it's as sturdy as it possibly can be. So what's next for me? Uh, first is the futon that I have upstairs. I want to put that on the wall here. So my goal is to make that fold out. So essentially it drops down, boom. And then I have a sleeping spot that'll go across here. And then I'll just flip it back up when I'm done. The other thing I wanna do is mount this table right where it is pretty much there find a secure spot for it so that way I can just unlatch it and drop it down in the trailer whenever I need it. And then definitely a little bit more organization needs to take place. The only problem with this trailer so far is that it's pretty much already been a tool collection point, which is not very good for somebody who's already extremely disorganized when it comes to managing their tools. Other than that, I have loved the trailer. It has been extremely beneficial to me. I think I've done a fairly decent job with the build and I'm really happy with the results up to this point. So let me take you through the wiring and the AC install now. This is what $160 of plywood looks like in today's age. So two sheets of three quarter inch plywood cost me $140 after tax, which is completely unbelievable in my mind. But anyway, I have uh, redone the tailgate here. I, I should have done a video of it. Uh, I didn't. I was just trying to get it all done and squared away. I have family in town, and so I kind of failed to set up the camera, but I think it looks phenomenal. I ended up picking some aluminum, aluminum edging. So this stuff right here is just three quarter inch wide aluminum edging that you can find at Lowe's or Home Depot or your local Ace store, anywhere else. And I put it all together here, and then I did a coat of Thompson's water seal on it. I think it looks fantastic. And the one thing that I wanted to talk about here is that I did install this AC adapter. Or AC power adapter, sorry. So it's really simple. I just took a hole saw. I drilled out a hole saw. Four 1 8 inch holes here and then size eight 
screws all the way into the plywood in the back and it creates a really sturdy mount. You just got it, it came with the compression seal. That's it. I mean, it was super simple. Should have done a video, but I did not. Thankfully, my grandfather was able to come up and help me out with the wiring for the trailer, which I really appreciated because I know absolutely nothing about general house wiring. With that being said, we wired up just like a house. We had the power coming in from the outside through the receptacle that I showed earlier, it coming up to the box, and this one singular panel does not have a main breaker per se, so we used a 50 amp breaker and we took the power coming in and wired to the breaker itself, so that way the breaker then fed the rest of the breakers in line of the panel. After we ended up wiring that up, he came through and wired up three outlet boxes for me, one by the TV and sound bar, one right there, and then one below the cabinets as well. And I'll address all of this here coming up right now, but I really appreciated my grandfather coming out and helping me out, so thank you very much. As you saw through the time lapse, my grandfather did the majority of the work but I wanted to take a moment and kind of just very quickly show what the end result was. Uh, I'm not going to take everything apart to get back there, but you can see the wiring that come through. We had a 20, I'm sorry, a 12 gauge wire that was going to that box on the wall. And we had a 10 gauge wire that we ran to the AC unit. Obviously the wires exposed aren't ideal. That's not exactly what, we wanted, but I also wasn't going to run them through the walls either. We left some space open in order to just do like a power sh outlet strip along this wall. And we can just wire it directly into some of the spare breakers that we have on there. You can see if you wanted to pause it right here, how we kind of have everything wired up at this point. Everything is 110, we didn't do 240. And then I also have an outlet below the toolbox that I'm going to use for a battery charger to keep hooked up to the 12 volt battery I have underneath there supporting my winch and anything else that I have down there. Simple, wired it up just like a house and it works. All my power adapters, depending on where we are, 50 amp to 30 amp to 15 amp. It looks okay, but uh, it definitely functions very well. Here we are on top of the roof again. This time for the AC install. It's a beautiful, clear sky with my kids just playing in the street because I'm a terrible father. Anyway, uh, so we are going to start with scraping off all the lap sealant from the top of the vent. And then we're going to get into actually placing the AC up top and then bolting it in place. We already have the wiring done as you saw earlier and I kind of did the walk around and we're going to go from there. So let's begin. compressed kind of gasket seal and I wanted to make sure that it was absolutely perfectly clean around the edge so that way we don't have a problem with that sealing and water intrusion. I still plan on probably running some silicone around it but Thank you. 
Sweet. All right, here we are. We have had to do a little bit of modification. We had to make a frame out of two by fours because we did not have the required depth that was required for the AC install. So it says three to six inches um, from the base of the AC to the bottom, we had two. And so we made the square two by four frame and that allowed us to bolt uh, this part here. There's four bolts that hold the AC unit in place. And now it is a good height. And so uh, this diverter is gonna seal up here to the frame and then uh, we compress the gasket about half an inch is what it requires and then we drill the hole through the two by four frame in order to put the wire through and connect in the box so that is where we are currently at ac is on and running feels good i have a temperature so we're gonna just take a quick measurement and see where we're at So pretty much anywhere between 37 and 50, depending on where I was hitting the laser. So all in all, working pretty well. Let's we'll see how long it takes to cool down this giant trailer. The trailer ended up cooling down pretty well over the course of the next couple of hours and everything is working exactly as it should. Thanks again for tuning in to part four of the trailer build. Stay tuned for part five where I will be doing the bed install as well as the installation of the table. As always, if you are enjoying what you are watching, please like and subscribe to my channel. That way you'll be able to stay up to date on all of the future videos and the last part of this trailer build. As always, thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll catch you next time.